I'm asking to the stage our next um, presenter, Nick Gomez from InCape. He's going to talk about using artificial intelligence to drive the content roadmap and the documentation style. And he's here. Hi. And Nick is co-founder at InCape. Um, they are helping more than 100 companies to turn their docs uh, into um, AI search and chat co-pilots that can answer um, more than 100,000 questions per month. Wow. Um, Nick, looking forward to your presentation. The stage is yours. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. That was all a uh, super great segue uh, for my presentation. Um, so yeah, uh, as mentioned, I'm founder at Inkeep. Uh, we help more than 100 teams incorporate search and chat co-pilots or chatbots into their documentation, uh, but also other places where they interact with their users like Discord and Slack and that type of thing. Um, like I mentioned, so Speakeasy uses us. A few other companies that use us uh, are Bun and Pinecone. You can go try us out live uh, on the, their different websites uh, if you use those products and are curious about what the experiences look like. Let and me... Are you... Okay. You yeah. want to use a full screen or this is on purpose? Yes. I okay. was about to click on that. <laughs> All right, um, and yeah, like mentioned, so basically we we answer over uh, 120,000 questions uh, a month now. Uh, so that's a little bit of an update um, since we wrote that. So uh, basically we get a lot of load and we've seen a lot of different cases uh, of the different edge cases that people run into when creating these co-pilots and like the different considerations. So what I'm gonna try to do for this presentation is uh, convey some of the, the learnings that we've seen from getting to, to this uh, type of load. Um, that are very applicable to how you write content or how might, you might use AI to actually help write, um, drive your own content roadmap and maybe even how you write your docs. All right. Okay, so as kind of mentioned a, a few times now and, and maybe the theme of the, the conference, um, today there's actually two audiences for when you write content and doc documentation and API specs. It's both users and developers. Uh, but also AI and large language models use the same content to, to be able to answer questions and interact with your, your product and uh, your documentation. Um, so one big use case and speaks to uh, what no one was talking about, which is if you make your uh, open API spec uh, really good, uh, that's actually how LLMs and AI uh, are going to interact with those same services that are powered by by those APIs. So this is less about the chatbot, uh, you know, support agent type stuff, uh, but it's more talking about hey, LLMs uh, are going to be interacting with different systems uh, using APIs. That's how uh, you know machines talk to each other, and the the thing that they use to be able to do that uh, is the open API specs, and so. The types of things like good naming, good descriptions, good examples um, that have been important for developers uh, are also really important for um, LLMs to be able to know how to leverage and talk to a system. They use basically like the same type of intuition that uh, a human would in terms of uh, being able to interact with uh, that API, basically. Um, so yeah, make sure your open API specs are really good. And the other side of things is more on like written content. So documentation, help center, uh, FAQs, that, that type of uh, material that's important for end users. Um, but for LLMs, it's really important for retrieval augmented generation, uh, i.e. RAG. Uh, and there's kind of two major use cases here. There's the LLM powered search engines, uh, which are you know becoming more and more popular. So th this is things like perplexity, uh, but also, you know, Microsoft Bing uh, and uh, Google uh, Bard, I think is what they call it. Um, yeah, so the, you know, search uh, nowadays, it's not just about like, you know, ranking top in the SEO results. It's also about can LLMs use your content and ac actually be able to answer a little bit about your product um, to users uh, using this type of service. And so those are, yeah, the global kind of LLM powered search engines. Uh, so that's one audience, LLM based audience uh, for your content. Uh, and then the other one is if you're creating your own chatbot uh, for your own documentation uh, or for your own support center, et cetera. And, and so, you know, we help companies with this, but, you know, this is also applicable if, if you're building your own. All right. Um, and so for that use case for when you're creating, you know, your own search and support uh, bot, uh, basically, this is how I like to think about it. And this is maybe not a super popular term yet, but uh, I'm trying to coin it. So uh, I call it fail case-driven development. So 
the, the big thing with LLMs um, is that they're not deterministic. So it's not super easy to, like in traditional engineering, try to think of all the different edge cases and all the different things you need to do beforehand. It's not like you can scope out exactly what you need when you're first starting uh, the, the project. Uh, instead, what we find is that it's easier to think about it as like, how do I get started uh, as quickly as possible and then iterate from there uh, and then improve the system as required as you see different fail cases. Um, so yeah, that's basically uh, how I think about it is like pinpoint where issues go wrong when you're creating this ra these RAG systems. Uh, and then you can improve on those to, to actually make the, the system better over time. And there's a few different techniques uh, here for each of these, or there's many techniques. I'm going to go over a few of uh, what we see in work. OK, so first, I'm going to focus more on the uh, ingestion and indexing side of things, um, because I think uh, this is doesn't actually require any engineering work. So this is more on content teams, documentation teams, uh, in for things that they can do to, to make their content really digestible for LLMs and artificial intelligence. OK, so uh, for one, think uh, hierarchically, basically. is So hierarchy uh, is really important. And uh, basically, it gives context to LLMs as to what a little chunk is. So a chunk in LLM world is just like, a, you can think of it as like a paragraph, like a little segment of content. Uh, oftentimes, uh, LLM search engines, uh, but also, for example, for Enkeep, uh, we look at not just the little chunk, but the hierarchy of uh, what I call breadcrumbs that lead to that chunk. And that hierarchy of breadcrumbs gives you context as to what that chunk is about. Um, and so the basically, you think of it as like the headings or the, the navigation path to get to that chunk. Um, and so the, the better you structure your, your documentation and the different categories within your documentation, different tabs, et cetera, uh, the easier it is to contextualize each any individual chunk uh, that might get picked during uh, basically retrieval. So yeah, hierarchy uh, is really important. Don't just have like one flat list of all your documentation. Okay. Uh, another part is uh, be nice to bots and scrapers. Um, and so basically two no-nos that uh, I see often in people's websites and documentation sites are either monolithic pages. So these are pages that have a ton of content in a single page, like really long page that you have to do a lot of scrolling for. Um, so these types of pages were popular or are popular because they're uh, sometimes easy for developers to be able to do like control F during uh, if they're on that page without having to navigate anywhere. Um, but they're not great for, again, for uh, indexers and, and scrapers. Um, we have ways to, to you know, work around that and, and ingest those types of pages. But uh, in general, most uh, scrapers and uh, like public uh, search engines like Perplexity, et cetera, don't do too well on, on those types of pages. Um, we see it often for API specs, uh, so like rendering it as a single long out, uh, reference file. Um, we see that, uh, and it's not too good for uh, for LLM and uh, in ingesters. And then the other side of things is client side loaded content, and so in particularly bad is when there's things like tabs where the content not only doesn't show until you click on it, but doesn't uh, isn't even in the DOM, like in the raw HTML if you inspect the, the browser. Um, if you don't see the content there and it's like dynamically being filled in, uh, then most uh, scrapers will miss that. Again, we, we have mitigations for that, but uh, in general, uh, these are things you want to avoid when you're developing your own or just to be friendly to uh, public search engines. OK, um, so that was talking a little bit about designing your content and thinking about how is this going to be used by not just humans, but also uh, LLS. And then the next parts are about more about optimizing the, the retrieval and the generation part of things. So what makes the, the name RAG? Um, and so what are the actual issues before talking about those optimizations? Like what actually goes wrong? So there's actually two types of things that go wrong from my experience. There's hallucinations. Uh, so hallucinations are basically when the large language models make things up. So the large language models are fine-tuned to generate pleasing answers to end users. Uh, and pleasing answers don't typically say things like, sorry, I don't know. Uh, and so models are really good at kind of just generating uh, garbage uh, and not being grounded on like factual truths necessarily. Um, so on the left here is if you just ask, like, what does P2 stand for for Pinecone uh, to just ChatGPT? 
And if it doesn't do the, the search uh, on Bing, uh, it'll just answer something like this. It'll say Pinecone, Pinecone um, in Pinecone, P2 stands for Pinecone platform. Uh, so that that's just wrong. That, that's not what uh, P2 stands for uh, in the context of Pinecone. Um, when you do RAG, so when you've, you're able to ingest content from uh, your websites or, or from reference content, uh, you're actually helping ground the model uh, with fa facts, basically. Um, and so on the right side, you see our service uh, that is able to use the Pinecone documentation. It says P2 in uh, Pinecone stands for a pod type that provides a greater query throughput with lower latency. So it's basically like a type of instance uh, of the Pinecone database. Um, so on the left are true hallucinations. On the right is what it looks like when it doesn't hallucinate. Um, but yeah, so that is the, the, the famous hallucinations. Um, but I, I actually think when people complain about um, the quality issues that they see with chatbots, especially when they're you know implementing their own or they're trying uh, chatbots that are incorporated in different websites, et cetera. Um, the, the problems that we see more often are actually around conflations. Uh, again, not, uh, maybe a, a well-defined term, um, but I think these are slightly different than hallucinations. And so the, the difference here is that the models are making mistakes because they are misinterpreting the content that they are given. Uh, they don't have enough context about what that content is supposed to be. And it's being told, basically, we think that this is reference uh, documentation that will answer the user's question. So it will try to interpret the content that it has passed as if it had the answer in it. And in doing that, it will interpret it uh, oftentimes wrongly if it doesn't have enough context uh, about the, the product. Um, so for example, in this question, how do I run sparse search on P2? Um, in the left side, this was uh, a a different chatbot uh, that uh, can answer questions about uh, Pinecone. Um, and in that chatbot, I presume in the RAG, they hit on a little paragraph in their documentation that talks about how to do sparse search. And so it, it gives like the, the bash query. Um, but what that question, uh, that chatbot, what it missed is that uh, another detail that says that P, uh, P2 instances don't support sparse search. And so this is an instance where it got one fact, which is how do I call and uh, like programmatically uh, make a sparse search on Pinecone in general? And it used that to answer the question, but it missed the other key detail, which is that's actually not supported on P2 instances. Um, and so on the right side is uh, it was able to get both of those really important pieces of context uh, to be able to answer the question, which is actually it's not supported. Um, so this is what, what I'm talking about where like, on the left side, the LM didn't actually lie about anything. It did see this content in the context that it was given, uh, but it didn't have the full context needed to be able to form like a, a fully truthful answer. Um, so this is conflations. Of, these are the the, the harder ones uh, that are, are are try to are hard to like snuffle out. Um, so how to fix this? Right? How to deal with hallucinations or how to do deal with conflations? Um, there's kind of two major things that you can do. Uh, so there's a lot of experimentation you can do uh, with RAG. And so there's a, a lot of good content out there. Uh, you can look at things like Llama Index or Lang Langchain uh, or other platforms for creating uh, RAG applications. And there's kind of like a different, uh, a lot of different bits that you can play with. So uh, some common ones that we see out there are things like hybrid search, uh, using re-rankers, um, using fusion ranking and retrieval across different dimensions um, and doing a lot of experimentation with prompt. Um, so there's basically a lot of parameters with how to get a good uh, RAG uh, solution. And my general recommendation here is uh, iterate and evaluate. So don't try to do all the fanciest uh, like uh, architectures or techniques that you see out there. Uh, just find a, a, a few test fail cases, like things that you see that you don't like uh, and then use those as like a test case for to iterate on it. Uh, and then over time, as you address different issues with your RAG implementation, uh, you can accumulate what I call a golden set. And so this is like a, a set of questions that you know the answers to, and you can evaluate uh, your uh, RAG uh, system against, uh, and then monitor and prod for uh, user feedback and that type of stuff. So this is uh, my general recommendations if you're like building your own chatbot, uh, just you know, look at these different types of uh, techniques, but uh, in general, just do uh, iterate and evaluate. Don't try to overcomplicate it from the start. Um, the other big part is actually 
fixing, you can fix a lot of those things that I mentioned with content, good content. Uh, so I think more folks will continue to talk about some of these best practices, but the the general just here is be scenario focused. Uh, so even in reference type content, it's nice to include some of uh, ideas of what you can do with that reference content, like what, what you can do with the product or the API, et cetera, uh, because users ask questions in scenario based ways that don't necessarily know the technical like concepts that they need to be asking for. Um, so including scenario focused uh, descriptions can help with uh, retrieval and search basically. Uh, another part is disambiguate similar sounding concepts, um, include end-to-end -end examples. So again, it's harder for LLMs and RAG systems to be able to pull content across many different uh, doc documents and like synthesize that together. Uh, it can be done, but it's uh, relatively uh, harder. And so including kind of like end-to-end -end examples of what you need to do to be able to accomplish a given scenario in a single documentation page can be nice as well. Um, and then the last bit here is to actually create a, an iteration loop where you use the user questions you're seeing in your chatbot uh, to drive your content improvements. And so what's really interesting is that user users are very expressive uh, in how they interact with a chatbot. They ask uh, pretty nuanced questions uh, at every step of their journey with your product. Uh, so you can get a lot of insights as to the types of things they're asking about, the types of scenarios they're asking about, uh, but also maybe where gaps in your documentation or your features that are. Um, yeah, so this is a, you can do a lot of with just content. You don't even have to worry about engineering stuff. Okay, um, I'm just going to do a quick demo here uh, of our product just to show you a little bit about uh, what we do and how you can implement some of these things that uh, I mentioned. And so the, in particular around content improvement. Uh, so with Inkeep, you get a full view of all the different chat sessions that people uh, have asked your, your chatbot. Uh, and you can look into these questions and uh, look at the full conversation. Um, and you get all these little nice filters for things like, uh, did the bot find content to be able to answer the question? Did the bot say that something was supported or not? Uh, so you get this really nice uh, CSV view. Um, but more importantly, uh, and you can do this, like you don't need Inkeep for this. Uh, if you're creating your own system, just log all your different uh, question and answer pairs and make sure that it's in like a digestible, digestible format for your team and you can kind of do your own synthesis. Uh, some of the value prop with Inkeep is that we can actually synthesize all those different conversations that people are having and generate a report for you on some of those documentation gaps or feature gaps uh, and also identify things like what are other third-party services and frameworks that people are talking about in relation to your to your product? So I'm going to go ahead and generate a report here. And so what this is basically doing, it's looking through all those different conversations. And in real time, we're doing a synthesis of the different topics that people are talking about uh, and the specific things that were not answered in my documentation uh, or that the bot said that was, weren't supported uh, by the, uh, the product. And so you can see it's uh, generating here and it's uh, telling me that, hey, there were some uh, people that asked about uh, how to, uh, what is this? Yeah, how to get their, their API key. And I guess we don't currently have documentation on that. So that's something we should uh, go um, document. Uh, but yeah, th this is what it looks like. Um, and like I mentioned, it also generates uh, this section around you know, these are some of the services that people are asking about. So Hugo, so maybe we, now we need to go and write a, a documentation guide of how to integrate Inkeep into Hugo, which is a documentation platform. Um, but yeah, this is this is what uh, Inkeep looks like with the, the LLM reports. Okay, and I guess just, uh, oops, sorry, last bit here. Uh, why Inkeep, like other things that, that we make uh, easy and what, what we do as a, as a company and as a product, um, on one thing, we, we make it really easy to integrate. So you don't have to worry about those RAG optimizations or creating a RAG system. We ingest your content from your documentation, GitHub issues, community forms, kind of wherever it exists. And we make it super easy to embed uh, our search and chat experiences into your documentation or your health center. Um, and uh, also as a Slack or Discord bot for your community or for your internal uh, Slack channels, that type of thing. Um, also, we've Again, we spent a lot of time ironing out all these little kinks and uh, reducing hallucinations and uh, conflations and all these different things. Uh, so in, in general, like you'll continue to uh, benefit from like the, the experience of uh, from us creating kind of this generalized product uh, and seeing all these different edge cases across many different companies. Uh, and then the last bit is the the 
the reporting and the uh, like the LLM report that I just showed you and the the, the nice dashboard basically to be able to uh, use that to actually drive your your content roadmap. Okay, uh, wrapping up. Uh, if you want to see for your docs, uh, basically just drop us your URL on our landing page, and we'll generate a demo for you uh, within the day, uh, within a few hours once I, I finish wrap up the um, the this conference. Uh, but yeah, basically happy to chat with you and, and share a demo. Uh, you can try it out uh, and, and see what we can do for your documentation. Uh, and last bit, if you want to follow us on Twitter or LinkedIn, uh, basically just do follow that inkey.com slash LinkedIn or slash Twitter uh, and happy to chat more uh, uh, digitally or uh, in the conference as well. Alrighty. Thank you very much.